Einstein's visualization of space-time that mass causes space-time to curve. For this, he developed a complete quantitative theory that describes space-time through highly abstract mathematics. General relativity is expressed in a set of interlinked differential equations that define how the shape of space-time depends on the amount of matter, or equivalently energy in the region. The solution of these so-called field equations can yield answers to different physical situations, including the behavior of individual bodies and of the entire universe. Manna, again came with a new episode as per commitment, General Relativity Part 3, which is my Time is an Illusion series Part 8, and my request is, please see my before episode as well as this episode without skipping for a better understanding. In this episode, we will discuss how Einstein theory of general relativity is the base of our modern physics and how it is experimentally proved time to time. So let us start the video. Please subscribe, like, and share my video. Your support will be my inspiration. Dr. Hermann Minkowski, one of Einstein's teacher and friend of another renowned mathematician, David Hilbert. 22 June 1864 to 12 January 1909 was a German mathematician and professor at Konigsberg, Zurich, and Göttingen. He earned his doctorate in 1885 under the direction of Ferdinand von Lindemann in 1883. He was awarded the Mathematic Prize of the French Academy of Sciences for his manuscript on the theory of quadratic forms. Hermann Minkowski showed that the universe resembles a four-dimensional structure with coordinates x, y, z, and c, t, representing length, width, height, and time, respectively. Hence, the universe can be described as a four-dimensional space-time continuum, which is a central concept in general relativity. Einstein tried to predict the shape and amount of curvature for a particular mass, but here it was not as simple as Euclidean geometry or Pythagoras equation like x square equal p square plus b square because here line and triangle are not straight but curved. For his experiment and formulation, he needs the help of his friend, Marshall Grossman. Marshall Grossman was an expert in differential geometry and tensor calculus, professor of mathematics at the Federal Polytechnic School in Zurich. Grossman, who emphasized the importance of a non-Euclidean geometry called Romanian geometry, also elliptic geometry, to Einstein, which was a necessary step in the development of Einstein's general theory of relativity. The collaboration of Einstein and Grossman led to a groundbreaking paper, Outline of a Generalized Theory of Relativity and a Theory of Gravitation, which was published in 1913 and was one of the two fundamental papers which established Einstein's theory of gravity. But that was not the final Einstein field equation. On 25th November 1915, Einstein presented the to the Prussian Academy of Sciences, which contained that what we today call the Einstein field equations, the new law of gravity that superseded Isaac Newton's inverse square law of gravity. That was 
Einstein took the lesson from special relativity that mass and energy are equivalent as one of his starting points, or rather the idea that both mass and energy have to produce gravitational fields. The main question was what the resulting gravitational fields would be presented by, what the left-hand side of Einstein field equation would be given that their right hand side was mass energy wow but there was another story merged with einstein field theory that was the german mathematician david hilbert one of the most influential and universal mathematicians of the 19th and early 20th centuries who discovered and developed a broad range of fundamental ideas in many areas including invariant theory, the calculus of variations, commutative algebra, algebraic number theory, the foundations of geometry, spectral theory of operators, and its application to integral equations, mathematical physics, and foundation of mathematics. David Hilbert sent to the Prussian Academy of Sciences the same field five days before Einstein's article. Although Einstein is credited with finding the field equations, for a long time it was believed that Einstein and Hilbert found the field equations of gravity independently. This is now fairly widely disputed. The question of priority for us thus still remains. This has resulted in accusations of plagiarism against Einstein, although not from Hilbert and assertions that the field equation should be called the Einstein-Hilbert field equations. However, Hilbert did not press his claim for priority and some have asserted that Einstein submitted the correct equations before Hilbert amended his own work work to include them. This suggests that Einstein developed the correct field equations first, though Hilbert may have reached them later independently or even learned of them afterwards through his correspondence with Einstein. However, others have criticized those assertions. The Einstein field equations are set of 10 equations contained in the tensor equation given below, which describe gravity as a result of space-time being curved by mass and energy. Einstein tensor is determined by the curvature of space and time at a particular point in space and time and is equated with the energy and momentum at that point. The solutions to these equations are components of the metric tensor, which specifies the space-time geometry. The inertial trajectories of particles can then be found using the geodesic equation. Singular feature of Einstein's view of gravity is its geometric nature. Whereas Newton thought that gravity was a force, Einstein showed that gravity arises from the shape of space-time. But there was a twist. The twist was, Einstein immediately understood that the field equation could describe the entire cosmos. In 1917, he modified the original version of his equation by adding what he called the cosmological term. This represented a force that acted to make the universe expand, thus contracting gravity which tends to make the universe contract. The result was a static universe in accordance with the best knowledge of this time. Alexander Alexandrovich Friedman, a Russian and Soviet physicist and mathematician. He is best known for his pioneering theory that the universe was expanding, governed by a set of equations he developed now known as the Friedman equations. 
In 1922, Friedman showed that the field equations predict a dynamic universe, which can either expand forever or go through cycles of alternating expansion and contraction. Einstein came to agree with this result and abandoned his cosmological term. Edwin Powell Hubble, November 20, 1889 to September 28, 1953 who was an American PhD astronomer at the university's Yerkes Observatory. He played a crucial role in establishing the fields of observational cosmology. He is regarded as one of the most important astronomers of all time. Edwin Hubble was famous for the development of the Big Bang model and amplified the concept of an expanding universe. Hubble discovered that many objects previously thought to be clouds of dust and gas and classified as nebula were actually galaxies beyond the Milky Way. He used a strong direct relationship between a classical Cepheid variable luminosity. A Cepheid variable is a type of star which are 4 to 20 times more massive than the Sun and up to 100,000 times more luminous that pulsates radially varying in both diameter and temperature and producing changes in brightness with a well-defined stable period and amplitude. Hubble provided evidence that the recessional velocity of a galaxy increases with its distance from the Earth, a property now known as Hubble's law. A recessional velocity is the rate at which an astronomical object is moving away typically from Earth. It can be measured by shifts in spectral lines or estimated by general redending of a galactic spectrum. Einstein's field equations depend on specific parameters that characterize the fate and shape of the universe. One is Hubble's constant, which defines how rapidly the universe is expanding. The other is the density of matter in the universe, which determines the strength of gravity. Below a certain critical density, gravity would be weak enough that the universe would expand forever, so that space would be unlimited. Above that value, gravity would be strong enough to make the universe shrink back to its original minute size after a finite period of expansion. A process called the Big Crunch, in this case, space would be limited or bounded like the surface of a sphere. Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is a stupid. The famous quote of Albert Einstein. Please see my upcoming video, General Relativity Part 4, which I have briefly described the proof of general relativity and how universe is created according to general relativity. Till now, thanks for watching my video.